And today I want to talk to you about what I have uh, moving missions and ministry. And after a word of prayer, we'll, we'll get into this lesson and I'll give you a little background as to why I came up with this passage. But let's go ahead and pray. I give you a moment to confess any sin if necessary. Confession of sin is the opportunity to get back into fellowship as a believer to get back into fellowship with the Father so that the Holy Spirit, who is the teacher of all truth, can teach us the truth of his word. Mental attitude sins, sins of the tongue, and overt sins should be confessed privately. Well, Father, we do thank you for this opportunity, and I pray, Father, that through the ministry of the Holy Spirit at this time available, that I can convey what it is, how you struck my heart with this message at the time that you did. I pray, Father, that all those here can hear this word and can act upon it accordingly. I thank you for this, and it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. If you would, turn to your Bibles, Romans 15, chapter 15, verses 15 and 16. And I'll give you a little background as to why I've chosen this passage. <clears throat> In our class, in our school, we've been teaching, we've got two courses we're teaching. One is uh, the 10 timelines of biblical history, and the other one is a homiletics course. We're, te we're teaching people how to prepare sermons and, and to deliver sermons. And, um, well, the last time we met, we had a work day, and, and I had two or three students, and one of the students, this was their passage of Scripture to speak on and what we're doing is we're teaching we're, we're we've broken them down to where we're, we're teaching on the eight works of the holy spirit and this particular student's topic was uh, sanctification well she picked out this verse and uh i'm going to read it to you and then let me tell you what how it struck what she got out of it and then what how the lord got me interested so let me read first paul says in verse 15 but i have written very boldly to you on some points so as to remind you again because of the grace that was given me from god to be a minister of christ jesus to the gentiles ministering as a priest the gospel of god that my offering of the gentiles might become acceptable sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Now, her word was sanctification and teaching on sanctification. When I asked her, and this is a point where Paul's making it clear to you that his commission is to go to the Gentiles. And he tells you up above in the same chapter in verses about verse 8, he says, For I say that Christ has become a servant to the circumcision on behalf of the truth of God to confirm the promises given to the Father. He's letting you know Christ came to the Jew. Paul now is commissioned to go to the Gentile. And what I'm asking you to do is to look at this from this woman's point of view. When I asked her, well, what is this telling you? She looked at me and she said, I want to go and minister the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world. So I'm like, I didn't do this. My mind is thinking, well, now hold on a second. You, you know, but no. Listen to people. I probably don't have time to get to it, but listen to people. When you talk to them about Christ, what was it that we learned today? Jesus listened to the man. He asked him questions. The man gave his answers. He didn't cut him off. He listened to him. Listen to people. Listen, God will tell you what to say. Listen to what people have to say so that you can help them. You can help them to get to the place. What was the importance of being a minister to the, to the Jew, to the Gentile? What was, the, what was the importance of all of that? To be saved. To be saved. To be saved. To, to be saved from darkness into light just through faith 
So I thought to myself, how exciting that is. How exciting that is to know what's the purpose of being a Christian in the first place. We all have the same mission. We've all been called for the same purpose. We have different gifts, but there's one, one call that we all have that we can all stand on, and that is to share the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world. So today I want to talk to you about this gospel as it relates to moving missions and ministry. All three may seem different, but they actually have the one common theme, which is sharing an ancient message to a modern world. Hasn't it always been that way? Absolutely. Whether it's the prophetic gospel or now the historical gospel, the same message is still presented the same way by moving, by missions, and by ministry. Point number one, man has always been moving to a different location ever since Adam. Adam moved from life to death, Romans 5.12, for by one man sin entered the world and death by sin, so death passed upon all men in that all have sinned. Adam moved from life to death. Genesis 3.15 is where we pick up the gospel message. That's known as the first gospel message, and that's where God says there will be enmity between Satan and his seed and between the woman and her seed, that seed being Christ. From that moment on, the gospel message was given to the human race. And from then on, everywhere man's moved, the men of God has always carried the same message. The message, Noah moved from the ancient world to the world that we live in today. Abraham moved from the Ur of Chaldees to the land of Canaan. Listen to what Paul says in Galatians 3.8. He says, in the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles, that would be the lost, that's all who are not Jews, by faith preach the gospel beforehand to Abraham. The gospel message has always been carried down. Finally, Moses went from Egypt to the edge of the promised land. In Deuteronomy 34, you'll find where he's able to look at the land, but he can't go into the land. What does all that mean? Simply this. All are motivated by God to move. He drove Adam from the garden. Genesis 3.24 tells you that he drove him out of the garden. Why? So that he wouldn't stay in sin eternally. That he had the promise of the gospel of Jesus Christ and he could be saved. He delivered Noah on the ark. He called Abraham. And then he rescued Moses and Israel from Egypt. And then finally, what came about when Christ came? Titus 3, 4 tells us, But when the kindness of God our Savior and his love for mankind appeared, he saved us. God always moving us. Listen to what he says in Romans 8. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of life and death. For what the law could not do, weak as it was through the flesh, God did, sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and as an offering for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh in order that, that's a purpose clause, in order that the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us. Christ fulfilled the law. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, new creation. In Adam all die, in Christ all will be made alive. What's the point of this? The faith in the gospel moves you from death to life. Man has always been moving. It's always been the gospel of Jesus Christ that God is after. Moving with the message of the gospel has always been a part of God's plan. <clears throat> if you would, look at Acts 1.8. I don't think I have it on your paper if you don't remember it. This moves us down to the missions. We're all missionaries. Whether you like it or not, we're all missionaries. Let me read to you Acts 1.8. How do I know we're missionaries? Matthew 28, 18 through 20 tells us to go into all the world to teach the gospel. Listen Listen to what Jesus said. 
he was face to face with these disciples for the last time before he ascends into heaven, face to face, and here's what he tells them. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses. Witnesses to what? We're only 40 days out from when they crucified him, from when they hung him on a cross for the sin of the world, for that faith in this, in this death, burial, and resurrection saves you. He says, all I'm interested in is you go out and tell people of the world. Where? Both in Jerusalem, all Judea, Samaria, even to the remotest part of the earth. Rick, Jackie, they go to foreign countries to share this gospel message. We have other missionaries out there that are doing this. We call them missionaries. We're all missionaries. How do I know? Well, go to the remotest part of the earth. If you can't make it there, just try across the nation like Gary Horton or just be somebody like Ernie. Just go to whoever you are out, wherever you are, just open that up. Just share that gospel message of Jesus Christ. Let me give you an example. The other day when I was at my office, my office was a ladder on the side of a house where I'm putting a window in. <laughs> I had to go to the warehouse, my truck, to get a tool. And on the way, there happened to be a young roofer in a discussion with this guy, and, and God worked it out. The next thing I know, I'm engaged in conversation and for 30 minutes, I listened to what he had to say, but what I was able to share with him was that Christ died for our sins. And he finally, and I was saying, and I told him the word is known as hooper in the Greek, which means as a replacement, as a substitute. He paid for my sins. I didn't pay for him. He goes, you know, I've never heard of that before. Because when we asked him, did he believe the gospel, he goes, mm, no, I just, I just don't. I just, you know, I'm just not. I'm just not into that. But the more that you listen to people, you don't have to be real smart. You just listen to them because all you're really doing is letting, let God do the work. God will work through you. That's what missions work is all about, sharing the gospel. Every believer, we know from Matthew 28, 18 through 20, every believer, he says, he tells them that all authority has been given to me. So now go out into the world and preach this message. So we know every believer on the authority of Jesus Christ can go. We can go and witness. We can locally, nationally, and globally. We may go. Doesn't mean we will go. A personal choice. Only human viewpoint prevents us. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about there. Take a look at Matthew chapter 16, if you would, please. Uh, verses 13 through 23. You're, I know you're familiar with this story. I want, you to, I want you to pay close attention to how Jesus handles this situation. And this is what we're talk, I'm talking about in listening to others. Listen to what they have to say. They're going to tell you stuff. L listen to what they're saying. They're going to speak from their heart. God, who lives in you, who has given you the Holy Spirit in your heart, he's poured out all of his love in your heart through the Holy Spirit who lives in you, Romans 5.5. 5. Listen to what the people are saying. You can hear what people say. What am, I, what am I saying? When Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, notice he's moving somewhere, he began asking his disciples, saying, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? Who do people say that the Son of Man is? He loved that title, you know, the Son of Man. Why? That showed us true humanity, true humanity, undiminished deity, true humanity. 
that showed his hypostatic union. But he loved that because uh, he understood the purpose. Why was that important? Remember, I read it here. God sent his son in the likeness of sinful flesh. In Hebrews, it tells us that uh, the blood of bulls and goats was not, that didn't satisfy God. What satisfied God? He says, but a body thou hast prepared for me. The son of man was prepared to die for the sins of the world. Who do people say? See, he's asking them, who do people say that the son of man is? Now, when you ask people, who do you think Christ is? What do you think about Christ? You're going to hear some answers. Notice, they said, well, some say you're John the Baptist. Others are Elijah, but still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Here's the question that I ask you today. And as we talk about missions, moving, ministry. But who do you say that I am? Who do we say Jesus is? That's what's important. What do I tell another individual about Jesus Christ that's of value to that person? Because ministry really is the word. Ministry means to serve, service, to serve. I'm trying to serve you. I and we are God's mouthpiece on this earth to serve them eternal life through Jesus Christ. That's all we're about. He says, but who do you say that I am? He wants to know what do they think now. What's their answer? Well, now, Peter, we understand. Peter answers and said, well, thou art the Christ. Notice the difference. The son of the living God. He says, who do you say the son of man is? He says, well, you're the son of the, you're the, son of the living God. He says, blessed are you, Simon, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Okay? Same way with us. We talk about spirituality, we talk about spiritual things. When we're, we're talking, if we're talking to an unbeliever, he is not spiritual. So we have to listen to what he says. So can we take, what can we take from them to introduce them to Christ? Because they don't, they don't know him. If you don't know Greek, you don't understand what we're saying. You come to our class, we'll teach you. I'm bringing you to this point for the main reason was, as we know, the story goes on. What happens then? It says, look at verse 21, and here's where we'll, we'll wrap up with this. But here's what he says. From that time, Jesus Christ began to show his disciples that he must go. He began to teach them the gospel, to show them that he would go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders, chief priests, and scribes, and be killed and be raised up on the third day. Okay. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, <laughs> saying, God forbid it, Lord, this shall never happen to you. Okay. But he turned and said to Peter, and this is my point about human Human viewpoint will prevent us from sharing the message of Jesus Christ to the world because we begin to listen to what we think. Oh, well, you know, I'm not all that smart, or I can't do it, or I'm not brave enough, or I've showed you we've all been called. You can do it. Jesus turns to him and says, get behind me, Satan. Now we see who's pushing the human agenda to not share the gospel. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are not setting your mind on God's interest, but man's. If you walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit urges you to share this gospel message with someone, do it. And with that, I'll close. Uh, thank you for listening. I got a lot more I could talk about, but um, y'all have been very patient. And uh,
I will. And he, uh, he, he needs our prayers for him to get back on the road this first week of October. Is it? Okay, fine. He's been brutal with his knee. Oh, man. All right. Well, let's close. Well, Father, uh, I do thank you. And I hear now, Father, just like with Al, also probably suffering greatly, we hear about Gary. We do pray, Father, for... for we know why... Uh, Give him the strength, Father, to go because we know that it's the enemy trying to keep him down from sharing the good news of your son, Jesus Christ, as he travels across the state of Kentucky. We pray for his strength, Father. Just strengthen that body. There's people there that want to hear about you, and you're capable. You've moved your gospel from the beginning of time, and it will continue until the new heaven and the new earth. And so we pray for that, Father. Uh, thank you for all those who have come this day, Father. Thank you for your word, the word of truth. We love you, Father. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.